Hi, and welcome to another fabulous informational video from Rue. We are so thrilled again to be joined by Dr. Kay Foster, one of our amazing core vets, and uh, she is doing us a solid and going to talk to us a little bit about the very scary topic of taxes. Um, so if you are new to the relief game, if you haven't been a relief vet or even a relief tech for very long, or if you've been considering it and the thing that is scaring you off is having to deal with your own taxes, we're going to try uh, from a totally non-legal, non-lawyerly point of view to um, soften that edge a little bit and hopefully show you that it's actually not that scary to do your own taxes. Um, and, and maybe that will inspire you to become a relief professional. So um, to begin, Dr. Foster, thank you for joining us. Um, you are one of our core vets, which means that you work exclusively as a relief veterinarian with Rue. And that means uh, that you are basically your own little business. So for folks who maybe don't know what that looks like or um, what that would involve, you you just tell us personally what you've done. Again, I am disclaiming we are neither of us are lawyers, <laughs> neither of us are tax attorneys or accountants, so we can't tell you exactly what you should do. But Dr. Foster, tell us, did you prefer to start out as a sole proprietor when you file your taxes or um, just using your social security number, or did you decide you wanted to start an LLC or a small business? Yeah, so I think when I first kind of decided that I was going to start doing this type of work. And so um, instead of being an associate doctor, which I was previously, I made the switch to essentially being a contract worker or self-employed. Um, so one of the first things I did was I got advice from my wonderful brother-in-law who uh, is an accountant. Um, he told me step number one is just to get in touch with a CPA um, just to really kind of sit down and consult on um, how I wanted to go forward um, because ultimately this stuff is overwhelming. Um, it's really hard to understand, which is why there's professionals that do that for you. Um, so I think ultimately that's going to be your first step. Um, what I chose to do, um, both for the sake of taxes and for the sake of liability, um, I chose to set myself up as an LLC, a limited liability, with the subcategory um, S Corp. Um, so you have a couple options with that, and that's what you really have to work with your CPA to decide what's going to work best for you. Um, but going forward, that was what I decided to do. Um, again, it is overwhelming. There are people who know how to do these things. Once you figure it out, it's not that bad. I've been telling everybody that, um, you know, I, I, I did that meeting with my CPA. I've been reading some articles. Um, I have really found that NerdWallet is really helpful. And I've actually found YouTube to be really helpful too. I found a group um, they are called the 180 Law Company, and they have a um, little series called um, All Up In Your Business that kind of helps break <laughs> down um, all the different options that you have and the pros and cons of each. So um, use all your resources. I think that I have my business degree from YouTube University now, so that's how I've been going. And there is not even a little bit of shame in that. And we should also just make sure that people know that while Dr. Foster is working in Texas, um, we also have vets who will be watching this from all over the country and every state has different laws. So in addition to uh, doing some research and finding a good CPA, you're also going to want to make sure that they are up to date on your state employment laws because what is true for our vets in Texas is not necessarily true for our vets in California, for example. So uh, just something to keep in mind as we're discussing all of this. So my next question, um, which uh, as, as someone who has done freelance work in the past was something that I learned the hard way all about uh, when it came time for me to file my taxes, which is estimating quarterly taxes because if you don't do it, you get stuck with a big old chunk of taxes you didn't realize you owed at the end of the year. Because even though you are um, 
not working for a company, you still have to pay your payroll taxes. Uh, so you have to make sure that you are paying those as you go. So how do you calculate your um, quarterly taxes and how do you sort of portion that out throughout the year? Yeah. Yeah. So um, moving from an associate doctor where I had those taxes, um, A, partially paid by an employer and B, taken out from each paycheck, you are moving on to um, not having that done anymore. So um, what you do is you pay quarterly taxes. You do that in April, June, September, and January. Um, and the way that I've done it that's most easy for me um, is I've actually just downloaded an app on my phone, um, QuickBooks Self-Employed, um, and it'll track all of my money coming in, any expenses that I might pay on um, licensing fees, uh, plums, uh, drug book subscription, things like that. Um, and then it will actually just calculate out for you um, your estimated quarterly tax. Um, and then you can just go to the um, IRS website and you can pay that way. You can also just use software like um, TurboTax or something like that. But um, I just found for tracking all of my expenses that app is really handy. Um, I think the biggest thing that I had to overcome is the fact that it is just an estimated tax. There isn't a right number down to the cent that I was looking for. Yep. Um, and then, so essentially you just pay that estimate then at your annual taxes, that's when, you know, if you go un under, you maybe will pay a little extra. If you go over, you maybe get a little bit back. Again, you're working working with the CPA at that annual tax time to help you figure out those numbers. For sure. And you mentioned briefly um, that you personally go onto the IRS's website to pay. I actually just recently discovered that that was even a thing um, because <laughs> back in my day, you had to print out forms or you had to get them and, and send them in with a check and like a little stub that said which taxes you were paying. But now you can literally just log on to the IRS website. Obviously, it's a secure website. Um, and you can pay right through there and they've got it tracked in their system. So they actually make it pretty easy, surprisingly. Um, so that's something that's just another little weight you can take off your shoulder. Um, and, and like you said, there are apps that your CPA will help you out with that. Um, and at some point, hopefully in the future, and this is like breaking news, um, Rue would really love to be able to help our independent contractors um, by helping you at least track your income on your platform. <laughs> Like you said, it's an estimate, so we can't tell you how much you have to pay, but we can tell you how much you earned each quarter. Um, and that way you'll be able to do your little calculation. Some people do 30% of each paycheck or whatever, whatever your magical calculation turns out to be. Um, it is in the books for us that we are going to try and help you uh, vets and vet techs out in the world figure all of that out. So um, that will be yet another thing that we're gonna try and do to make it easy. Um, and so you kind of also answered this last question, but I do just wanna make sure that people understand it truly, it is an estimated tax. Now, obviously, when you work for a company or when you work for yourself and you're, you're getting these payroll taxes taken out, the exact amount that you owe, you won't know until the government looks at your tax return and decides. So even if you work for a vet clinic and they're taking taxes out, sometimes you still end up owing taxes, which is a bummer, but it happens. Um, and on the flip side, sometimes you've overpaid and you get that beautiful refund check, which is the best. So if you're calculating out your quarterly taxes, it may not be a bad idea to like overestimate it a little bit, just pay more than you think because then you will uh, get that money back. And if you actually turned out that you were a little bit more accurate than you thought, um, then at the end, you're not going to get that huge hit from actually having to pay more taxes. So um, you, you answered these questions so well that I don't even have to like go through A, B, and C, and D. You answered them all perfectly. And it looks like we had a little debut pop in there from Ichabod. Did he come back? Because <laughs> people need to see the handsome Black Panther hanging out with Dr. Foster. See, vets, they're just like us. <laughs> just yeah. So this is my little kittishan kitten for any of my Rossies out there. He came from St. Kitts. Oh so. my God traveled a long way to be here in Texas with That's me. So cute that I, it's just even cuter than I initially even realized. Um, <laughs> well, you were succinct and informative and hopefully uh, anybody who's watching this feels just a little bit less nervous 
about the prospect of having to do your own taxes as an independent contractor. Um, this obviously is a learning process for everybody. And like you said, you have a CPA, even if it's your brother-in-law or somebody, you still use those resources um, and, and make it work for you so that whatever you do, if you set yourself up as an LLC or you just decide to you know, be a sole proprietor, whatever it is, it works for you and it makes your career fulfilling because that is what is most important to us here at Rue. So again, thank you, Dr. Foster. You're just like a font of, of wealth of knowledge that we're so grateful to have you um, and to be able to speak to anybody watching this. If you have never heard of Rue and you're interested in what uh, the magical world of online relief platforms could possibly do for you, um, visit www.ru.vet. It is free to join. There's no membership fee, no nothing. You get to decide what your schedule is, where you work, when you work, total freedom. We're all about trying to um, reinvigorate your career and make you feel really good about what you do because you got into the veterinary world because you love animals. Look at Ichabod. This is why we do what we do. So thank you, Dr. Foster. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, stay tuned. We're going to try and make some more of these informative little videos. So stick around and uh, we hope to see you on the roof. Take care.